Hey guys, Greg Benz here with another landscape photography tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how to combine multiple different wave exposures together into one finished ocean seascape scene. So you can capture that epic, magical nature of the ocean, which kind of defies a photograph. When you think about your experience with the beach, it's over time. You see these waves crashing on this rock, and then a moment later they're crashing on this rock, and all the elements of the scene that help you feel the shape of the environment around you happen over time. You could use a longer exposure, but all that happens is everything kind of blurs out to a milky white. To capture that energy, what you want to do is take multiple shorter exposures. Maybe they're half a second, maybe two seconds, you know, depends on the scene. But combine those multiple exposures and use the best elements of each in one finished product. And that's what will really recreate the energy of the ocean. Now, previously I showed you how to edit one portion of this image, and that was using the, pop the perspective warp tool to increase the size of this sea stack. In this demonstration, we'll just focus on how to blend six wave exposures together. And those wave exposures look like this. And notice that in these different scenes, the, the sky and the waves are moving, and you, you just you get that feel of the ocean from these exposures. So we're gonna select these and send them over to Photoshop. Now I could have also right clicked and chose edit in open as layers in Photoshop if I was connected to my external hard drive, but I'm working off of smart previews. They don't exist on this laptop, so that's not an option, but that would normally be a way to put everything into one file. Instead, I'll go to file, scripts, load files into stack, and then hit add open files, which is gonna take everything that's open in Photoshop, say okay, and it's just taking all the files we just sent over from Lightroom and putting them into one layered Photoshop file. So we can see they're all open here, and now we have all these things stacked and ready to go. But notice a few things. When we zoom into the scene here, look at this C stack, see how it's moving. It's not aligned. And that's because as I shot this scene, I had a tripod in the ocean and waves are hitting it. And I'm doing my best to stabilize that tripod by pushing it down deep into the sand, but I didn't get it stable for every shot. And so shot to shot, there might be a little bit of movement. In fact, some of these frames, the rocks are even a little bit soft because the camera moved when the wave hit the, the tripod. So that is a challenge. Now we could take all these and uh, note if you click and drag in the eyeballs, you can turn them all on or off at once. So that's just kind of a cool little trick. But let's select all the layers, go to Edit, Auto Align Layers, and hit OK. And Photoshop's gonna try to automatically align our images together. But it's gonna actually do a pretty terrible job. Look at that C stack in the background just moving all over the place. And that's understandable because most of this image is motion. The, the clouds are moving in a pattern, the waves are moving all over the place, and Photoshop just doesn't have enough static information to put this all together for you automatically, which is okay. We're just gonna manually blend these together. We're gonna manually align them. So I'm gonna undo what we just did, and we'll just start to piece this image together one piece at a time. And it's actually pretty straightforward. So we'll just take the bottom layer, I'm gonna lock it down so I don't make any changes to it at all. We'll take this next layer and just lock the pixels, because once we start painting on a mask, I don't want to paint on the pixels of that layer because I'll be painting white or black onto my image. And that's just an easy mistake to make when you're working, especially working quickly. So let's start to align this. By to go to the, uh, the blend modes, and you wanna go down to one called difference towards the bottom here. And what difference is doing is, is literally looking at what is different between the, the pixels in this layer and the ones beneath. And it's going to be, you know, this area where the water's falling down on the rocks obviously doesn't exist in the other frame obviously the moving water here, but also see this halo. Those rocks should be aligned. Now, this was one of the frames that had a little bit of motion, so naturally there's gonna be a little bit of blur, but these should be relatively aligned. We don't want that halo in areas where I'm going to paint in rocks. So I don't care that we're misaligned on the left-hand side because I'm not gonna paint in those rocks. I don't care about this middle sea stack. I don't even care about the waves in the foreground because there's no definitive detail to the motion there. So that's very easy to fake even if I was off by a few pixels. But I do care about these rocks on the top because when I try to blend in this water, 
I'm going to be blending some of the original image. I could switch over to the light and blend mode and just paint in water that way. That would be one workaround, but I'd prefer to just make sure that I'm aligned. So let's zoom in and it's very easy to align this good enough. We just click the V for the move tool. I'm selected on the layer I want to move and now I'm just clicking the arrow keys to move up, down, left and right until I get to a point where this halo can't get any better. If I move right, it's a little better. If I move right again, it's worse. Worse to the left, worse up, worse down. Well, pretty much the same. So this is essentially perfectly aligned in this part of the image now. So I'll switch back to the normal blend mode and we're ready to start blending these two together. To do that, we just alt click on the new layer mask icon, it gives us a black mask. We've hidden that top layer. We have that layer mask selected. Hit B for the paintbrush, D for the default black and white, and make sure that your brush has the right settings. I like to use high opacity so that I can paint all the way to the maximum amount of the original image that I'm blending in, but with a low flow. Let's be build softly to that point. And I also like to use a very soft brush. So hardness set to zero or certainly something pretty low. And now we'll just take and brush into this area. And you know, you can see that it looks very, very convincing that the water's flowing over the edge of, the, of these rocks here because we got proper alignment. In fact, the only possible you know, issue I see in what I've just done there, notice the bottom here from before and after, I've got this little bit of dark band that doesn't look quite right with all the water splashing around. So I'm just going to switch to black and I sort of paint a little farther than I should have. So just softly paint that out. So I'm just removing that part of the blend and things look great. And because we're painting moving water into moving water, it just, it's very easy to blend this. And let's zoom in here just to, to get a sense of this scene. You know, the rocks look great. You know, I could try and switch this over to the lighten blend mode, which is uh, hiding up here. And you see that, you know, it's, it's pretty good, but I've got a bit of a halo. So it's one thing you can play with. Normal just works better here because these original rocks are just blending in in a very natural way. So that's what I would stick with. So again, it's just a little bit of misalignment that made lighten not quite work here. Um, and every image will be different. So I would play with normal and lighten blend modes. So we're just going to continue this process. So let's turn on this next layer. And what I like about this layer is this exploding wave behind the rock here creates a nice separation of this front rock from the two behind it. And I like this kind of rolling um, small crested wave here. So we're going to grab those. So let's just zoom in and make sure we've got good alignment on that rock. So again, I'm going to lock my pixels down. I'm going to switch over to the difference blend mode, zoom in a little bit more. Click V for the move tool, and we're just moving to get that C stack. So that's lined on that C stack there. Just this little spot right there is what I want to get rid of. Go back to normal. Alt click the new layer mask icon, and we are ready to start painting with our white paintbrush. So I'm just adding this exploding wave around the edges here. Let's see, kind of see how far you want to bring this out. and. You know, there are no right or wrong answers here. I'm just looking at, you know, what elements of the wave I think tell the right story. And I can always, you know, undo the changes that, that I'm making because I'm painting through a layer mask. So I can, you know, let's say I want to bring back a little bit more of that rock there. Well, that's fine. I can just paint black on it. So very easy to make little changes. And, you know, I can decide, do I want this rock to be here? or do I not want it here? And I, I kind of like it gone, so we'll just leave it like that, we'll just kind of paint it out. So it just simplifies the scene, which is what I'm usually going for. Okay, let's go to the next one here. We turn this on, we've got this nice wave formation back here that is just adding a little bit more energy and perhaps a little bit more separation. And if I want these waves up top, I could grab them as well. I don't think I need them. I kind of like seeing the top of that rock. But let's, um, let's just zoom in and we'll get this aligned and we'll add that element. So go back to our difference blend mode, uh, lock our pixels, and let's see here. I hit exclusion. There we go. Difference. Knew something was wrong there. And it looks like it's pretty much already aligned. There's nothing on this edge that has a white halo. So actually we're good to go. I don't need to bother moving anything. 
load another black mask, switch to our white paintbrush here, and just start painting that in. And I'm using the, the bracket keys here to go to a smaller, larger brush. And I'm using the X key to switch between black and white quickly. Uh, it's good to understand these keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop because they can save you a lot of time. One of them being if we shift click on this mask, we can see what happens if we make everything white in the mask and bring that through. I'm just looking to see are there any elements in this other part of the image that I like. You know, one thing I do like is there's maybe a little more separation between the rocks there, but I'm just leave it. So it's pretty subtle. All right, so the next exposure, we've got a much better separation in the background. This looks great with this exploding wave back here coming over and just creating that separation between these two C stacks that otherwise without that, there isn't three dimensionality in the image. And with that, now we can see the separation. So, all right, you guys are getting used to the routine here. So go to our difference blend mode. Uh, the only thing I care about is this little top here. Make sure that that's aligned. So we'll go to our move tool and looks like about one click and yep. All right, we are fully aligned. Go back to the normal blend mode. Alt click for a black layer mask. B and X to get a white paintbrush. And you guys are, are getting the routine down. All right, we've got that in. And let's go to this last layer here. And what is, this one is bringing in this foreground. See how these lines just sweep very nicely through the image. I love that as a leading line. I don't know if I wanna leave everything open in the middle here with this reflection. I kinda of like some of that energy. But right now, I'm bringing a lot of white water to the edge of the frame that's kind of drawing my eyes out of the frame. So I do want to diminish that a little bit. So in this case, I probably don't have to line anything, but I'll go ahead and just check and make sure there's nothing along this rock edge here, just in case we get to that point. And, you know, with the underlying waterfall and everything, there's, there's really nothing here, but I'm just going to use the move tool and see if I can get any... Yeah, a little bit better there if I nudge it around. So it's a little bit more aligned. Don't think it matters, but why not? Again, let's lock down our pixels. Alt click for our mask. And this one's a little trickier. These other elements, we're just adding everything in fully. This time, I want to seamlessly transition between these. So I'll probably turn the, the flow down even more and more gradually build to the effect. Because if I you know, kind of jump there too quickly, I might have an obvious transition line between them. I want to be careful not to paint up here on this waterfall start to erase it. So, you know, start playing around here, figuring out what's going to let me deal with these neighboring areas. And let's maybe just try and hit this a little bit. And I do want to make sure I'm kind of keeping that energy. So that brightness I kind of like there. So we've gone from there to there, which just gives you a little bit more flow and, and brings the eye through. I do still see some of that C stack reflection there, which adds a little bit to the depth. So I like how that looks overall. So let's just take a look at what we've done. We've gone from an original base image like this that had a lot of great foreground energy, but was pulling you out of frame. And then just really no dynamic energy on the surrounding areas here. There's no waterfall, there's no separation. You can't cleanly see these are multiple C stacks other than just this bottom ridge is your only clue. And we add in this waterfall. Okay, now we, now we can tell this is definitely different from this one. And we add in this next one and now we really cleanly see the, the difference between the rocks here. Add in this next one, it's just a little bit more powerful energy. This one's probably the least you know required exposure of all of them. This one really adds to the image. Notice how here it looks like there's maybe just one C stack and now you can clearly see that there are two. That just gives it a lot more depth in the image. And then lastly, just the eye control here to, uh, to keep your eye in frame and, and make sure you're moving up towards the C stack. So that's it, pretty simple process. Uh, no luminosity mask required for this part of the edit. I did not show you the, the sky that I used in this. I did a sky replacement, lots of luminosity masks there, as well as during the dodging and burning phases. But blending the exposures together with the water, it's actually pretty simple. It's a very forgiving process. Most important thing is just make sure you're aligned, and then you can just start blending, and you know try the light and blend mode if you need to. That can be uh, super helpful. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. Please click the subscribe button. Make sure you know about new and upcoming tutorials. I post regular Photoshop and landscape photography tutorials on YouTube. So make sure you're getting those and I'll see you next time.